My friends in Jesus, peace be with you. We are looking at the Gospel of Mark in order to get to know Jesus and through Jesus to get to know God. Well, one day Jesus went back to his own village, Nazareth. Not a big village, a remote village in fact, and maybe in those days 300, 400 inhabitants. On the Sabbath day, Jesus goes into the temple. Rather, Jesus goes into the... On the Sabbath day, Jesus goes into the synagogue and he reads to the... He reads the word of God to the people and then he speaks. And everyone is amazed. But then they say, Isn't this the carpenter? I mean... He's lived in this village and he worked for us. Is his mother not Mary? And uh, do, are, are his brothers and sisters not living here? Then how has he become a preacher like this? He's just an ordinary man. So they say, where did the man get these things? What is this wisdom that he has been given? And uh, what about these miracles that he's working? Is he not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James and John, Joseph, Joseph and Judas and Simon? Are his sisters not here? And they think he's just an ordinary man. Now how wrong they were. How wrong they were, because that man who was preaching to them in the synagogue was no other than the God who lives in unapproachable light, whom no man has seen and no man can see. He is the infinite God. But he has come to this world in a way that we can easily meet him, speak with him, and uh, interact with him. And in fact, to have a very personal relationship with him. In fact, that is why he came. In the Old Testament, in the book of Genesis, we read, how Adam and Eve were in the garden and in the cool of the evening God would come and spend time with them. Well, in Jesus God does exactly the same. But not just spending a few hours, he came to spend his life with us. And in fact, he's still with us today. So he is the God who lives in unapproachable light. The infinite God whom Isaiah experienced in the temple with the cherubim saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts. And here he was, like a carpenter in Nazareth. And everybody knew him, or at least they thought they knew him, but they didn't know him at all. Because, as the prophet Isaiah says, or God speaking through the prophet Isaiah says in chapter 55, My ways are not your ways, and your thoughts are not my thoughts. As far as the sky is above the earth, so are my thoughts above your thoughts, and my ways above your ways. Friends, if we are looking for God, then don't expect to find him in the place 
you expect him to be. You must look in the most unlikely of places and there you will find God. You see, Jesus or God, because they are both the same, God says, learn from me because I am meek and humble of heart. And if I may say so, that statement of Jesus is an understatement. He is not just meek and humble of heart. Although he is God, as St. Paul tells us in the letter to the Philippians, chapter 2, verse 6 and following, although he is God, he never thought that he should always be like God, with the glory of God. Rather, he emptied himself, emptied himself totally and became a human being. And not only just a human being, but he became a slave to everyone. He put himself at the service of everyone. And so, my dear friends, God is very surprising. And let us say also, he is disturbing too, because he's not like us. In no way is he like us. So he is in the form of man. But this man is God, the creator of the world. He is the one who by the power of his word created the whole universe. And now by the power of his word, as the letter to the Hebrews tells us, sustains the universe in being. And yet he has humbled himself. And in the Gospel of Matthew, he tells us that he has identified himself with the last and the least in our community and society and the world. Why? Because he loves every human being. And because he loves every human being, he is moved with pity. His, his mercy swells up when he sees his ch children suffering, when he sees them oppressed, when he sees them suffering the pains and the agonies of poverty and sickness. God is moved with pity for them because he loves them. He loves them, as Prophet Hosea says, with all his heart. He loves them without limit. And therefore, he reaches out to them. And he has entrusted this world to us. He doesn't interfere directly. He has, as, as we read in the book of Genesis, he then gave authority to, to look after the world to Adam and Eve. That means to us. But we are to recognize God still living in this world. So let us be careful lest we miss him. So you meet an old elderly lady sweeping the compound of the church and 
you discover that she has lost her husband, she has lost her son or daughter, she has no one, and she has no place to live, and she does small little tasks. And you pass by, beware, because you are passing by God himself. And when we pass by God now in the in the guise of the oppressed and the, the last and the least, then one day we will regret it. And if we don't pass by, if we reach out to him in this guise of the last and least, he will remember that and say, what you did to her or to him, you did to me, and the kingdom of heaven is yours now. Let's take a break now then. The problem that Jesus had, or one of the problems that he had, was that the scribes and the Pharisees, they didn't want to change the way they thought. They were used to their way of religion. They were used to their way of thinking, their way of thinking about God also. And they didn't want to change. Cardinal Newman made the remark, that to be human is to change. And to be really human is to change often. And we also have to change our way of thinking. That's the way, that is, that is why we have to meet Jesus and meet Jesus in the Gospels. When we look at Jesus, we are looking at God. So, if you ask the question, I wonder what God would do if he came into this world, then you find your answer by looking at Jesus and by listening to what Jesus said. Because he is God. He is the one and only God. And he has come into this world, first of all, because he loves this world. God so loved the world, it says in the Gospel of John, that he sent his only son. So God loves this world. And that's why Jesus, who is God, has come into this world. And we can understand God by looking at Jesus. This is the important thing. God lives in unapproachable light and no man has seen him or can see him and therefore no human being knows what God is like. God is the unknowable. Only those to whom Jesus reveals the mind of God will understand God. Nobody else, no other human being can understand the mind of God because no human being has ever seen God or can see God. But now God has revealed himself in human form as a human being just like me, just like you, speaking the same language, this human language, having the same feelings, 
and the same emotions and the same mind that we have. And in this way, he shows us in the way that we can understand just who God is. In the chapter 2 of Mark, Jesus and his disciples, they come back to Capernaum, and uh, Jesus is preaching to the people in the house where he is living, and the people flock there, and uh, the whole house is full, and the courtyard outside the house also full. And then, as we know, there are four friends, and they have another friend who is paralyzed. And they believe if we can take our friend to Jesus, then he will heal him and he will be well again. And so they pick up their friend on the, on the mattress that he is lying on, and they carry him to the house where they know Jesus is. But they, as we know, they can't get inside because there are so many people there. And so they think of a way to get their friend to Jesus. So they climb onto the roof, carrying this man on his mattress. And, and then they open the roof the roofs in Palestine in those days were built with kind of sticks and grass and mud and make, they make a hole in the roof and then they let the man down, don't they? Right down in front of Jesus so that he can't miss him. And then Jesus says to him, My friend, your sins are forgiven. Immediately, the scribes and the Pharisees who were there, they are shocked. Who can forgive sins? They, they, they miss the whole point because they, they think now Jesus is blaspheming. Only God can forgive sins, which is true because sin is an offense against God, and only God, therefore, can forgive them. But Jesus forgives this man uh, his sins. But then, then Jesus understands their mind, and he wants them to change the way they think. He, he, he says, what is easier, to, to say your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up and walk. Well, obviously, it's far more difficult to say, get up and walk, because if the man doesn't get up and walk, then you're going to look like a fool. And so Jesus turns to the man, doesn't he? And he says, I tell you, my son, get up and walk. And he gets up. And he picks up his mat and he walks out glorifying God. And all the people glorify God too, except the uh, scribes, the teachers of the law. Let us listen to the word. The four men who carried the man could not get near Jesus because of the crowd. So they opened the roof above the room where Jesus was, and through the hole they lowered the man on his mat. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, My son, your sins are forgiven. Now some of the teachers of the law who were sitting there wondered within themselves, how can he speak like this? It is blasphemy. Who can forgive sins except God? 
At once Jesus knew in his spirit what they were thinking and asked, Why do you have such thoughts? Which is easier, to say to this paralyzed man, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Rise, take up your mat, and walk. But that you shall know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, Rise, take up your mat, and go home. The man rose, and in the sight of all those people, took up his mat and went out. All of them were astonished and praised God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. So there Jesus raised up the man, raised him up spiritually and raised him up physically. Our Blessed Lady in the Gospel of Luke, she tells us the same things. She says, he has acted with power, God. God has acted with power and done wonders and scattered the proud with all their plans. He has put down the mighty from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He filled the hungry with good things and has sent the rich away empty. And there Jesus is the God who lifts up the lowly. And if we come to him too, he will lift us up. He has come to bless. And those who come to him will be blessed indeed. And may God bless you. Mm -hmm.